Gene stealer hybrids are creatures that are, as implied by their very names, the hybrid offspring of creatures that have been infected with the viral genetic material of the tyrannid bioforms known as gene stealers. Whenever an individual becomes infected with a gene stealer's genetic material, they will fall under the psychic sway of the very creature that infected them, and before long, they will become driven by the overwhelming urge to breed. The resulting offspring will develop features of both the gene stealer and its host species, becoming a monstrous amalgamation of the two. These hybrids will swiftly grow to maturation, and in turn, will also seek to infect others with their genetic material in order to increase the size of the nascent community known as a gene stealer cult. While early generations of hybrids will sport an appearance more reminiscent to that of a pure strain gene stealer, with bulbous heads, fanged maws, multiple limbs and even a thick carapace or large, rending claws, such features will begin to grow more recessive with each successive generation. By the time the fourth generation of hybrids have emerged, they have become almost indistinguishable from their host species, save for the fact that the hybrids sport a heavier bone structure and retain a gene stealer's distinctive, hypnotic gaze. When the time comes for fourth generation hybrids to reproduce, the resulting offspring will always be a pure strain gene stealer as opposed to yet another generation of hybrids, with these pure strains going forth to begin the infectious cycle all over again. In addition to the more archetypal hybrids being spawned, each generation has a chance to give rise to a number of specialist organisms, such as the third generation warrior strain known as the Kellermorph, or the fourth generation Magus, an incredibly potent psyker which often serves as the public face of the cult itself. One of the most feared of these more unique types of hybrids are the creatures known, appropriately enough, as aberrants. These aberrants are large, misshapen monstrosities, boasting a size, strength, and sheer resilience far in excess of that demonstrated by other hybrid strains. While aberrants are physically imposing creatures, they are also exceptionally dim-witted, demonstrating an intellect no greater than that exhibited by a human child. Such creatures will typically be kept away hidden from sight prior to the cult's uprising, using their immense strength to carve out a vast network of underground passageways and tunnels for their fellow cultists to use. When the insurgency finally begins, the cult's aberrants will be used as living battering rams, utilising a combination of heavy construction equipment and their own natural brute strength to demolish all within their path. This, in conjunction with their monstrous appearance, results in the aberrants sowing panic, terror, and confusion throughout the local populace, which in turn allows their fellow cultists to eliminate all who stand against them with little resistance. When a tyrannid high fleet tendril begins to make its approach to the world that the cult is operating upon, this can result in a number of aberrants to mutate even further, such as by growing a large, powerful tail tipped with a sharp, blade-like stinger, which is capable of tearing through flesh, bone, and armour with equal ease. Sometimes a gene stealer patriarch will choose to imbue an individual aberrant with a mutagen derived from its own genetic material, which in turn results in the hybrid growing even larger and more robust, twisting its very skeletal structure and musculature into a new, more powerful form, as well as granting the creature incredible regenerative abilities. These particular aberrants, which are guided directly by the Patriarch via a creature known as a Mind Worm Familiar, become known as Abominants. And yet, the exact process that results in the creation of an aberrant remains somewhat unclear, with not even the other members of the cult, such as the previously mentioned Mega Strain, knowing as to how such creatures come into existence. So what could be the exact circumstances that give rise to an aberrant hybrid? The first possibility is that aberrants are simply created due to one or more of their host parents displaying some form of genetic instability, deficiency, or mutation. To use humanity as an example, since humans are the most widely documented host organism utilised by gene stealers, many citizens throughout the Imperium of Man, particularly those that reside upon densely populated and heavily polluted hive worlds, will, over the course of several generations, have their genetic sequence gradually degrade and, in turn, grow increasingly unstable. 
Upon the world of Necromunda, for example, mutations are generally caused by a buildup of toxins and pollutants within the biosystem, which can occur through the consumption of continuously recycled food, air and water, or through direct exposure to chemical waste and other such effluvia. The majority of deformities that arise in this manner tend to be fairly minor or otherwise inconvenient, such as webbed hands, extra fingers or toes, or sickly green skin. Although more extreme mutations, such as multiple limbs, extra heads, wings or chitinous armor plating, have also been documented as occurring within those that dwell within the underhives. Because of how common mutation is upon the majority of hive worlds, mutants are often tolerated by imperial authorities, at least to a certain extent, providing that their deformities are considered to be minor or otherwise easy to conceal whereas those individuals that display more grievous abnormalities will typically be hunted down and eradicated. If a gene stealer implanted its genetic material into a host that bore an unstable genome, then the viral seed of the Xenos could inadvertently intensify and exacerbate any inherent genetic impurities displayed by the host species to an extreme degree within the developing hybrid offspring, resulting in the creation of an aberrant. Another possible explanation regarding the creation of aberrants is that they are the result of intense warp storm activity. It's well known that increased exposure to the energies of the warp is known to produce a variety of different mutations within living organisms, both physical and psychic in nature. For instance, with the creation of the colossal warp rift known as the Secretrix Maledictum, the number of individuals being born with or developing latent psychic abilities has increased to unprecedented levels, with some worlds, particularly those within close proximity to the rift itself, noting that the number of psychically sensitive individuals has increased up to a thousandfold. As a result, should a gene stealer implant its viral seed into a host whilst a warp storm is raging within close proximity of its world, then it's reasonable to assume that this increase in the amount of warp energy could have somehow corrupted the gene stealer's genetic material, so that any offspring produced by the host is born as an aberrant hybrid, or that the host themselves begin to undergo extensive mutation as the Xenos genetic material begins to slowly rewrite their very DNA. Alternatively, perhaps such corruption isn't caused by any sort of natural phenomena, such as a warp storm, but is in fact the result of the gene stealer or infected host coming into close proximity of a sorcerous ritual, which in a similar manner to the previously mentioned warp storm hypothesis, had somehow managed to taint the viral seed of the gene stealer, twisting and corrupting any developing hybrids into a new, monstrously deformed form. Or perhaps aberrants are not so much created by accident or through mere happenstance, but are in fact deliberately engineered. As detailed within the 8th edition Gene Stealer Cult Codex, some have suggested that aberrants are the result of curious bioscryers dabbling in genetic manipulation, only to be killed by their creations once they reach maturation. While this possibility would certainly appear to be fairly plausible at first glance, the fact that aberrants are so widely documented would appear to suggest that, instead of such creatures being the result of individual geneticists, such creatures may in fact be, for lack of a better term, mass-produced. This idea isn't entirely outside the realm of possibility, due to the existence of one particular substrain of genes dealer hybrid, the biophagus. Biophages are specialist fourth generation hybrids that demonstrate an innate understanding of genetic manipulation and biological alchemy, which are responsible for developing various methods to effectively industrialize and increase the overall rate of infection and infestation, and in turn allow the cult to spread its influence even further. Such individuals will often pose as scientists or Medicaid personnel, allowing them to subtly and discreetly test new methods in spreading the viral influence of the cult. For example, the biophagists of the Twisted Helix cult had discovered that infection can be transmitted through the ingestion of contaminated food rations and medical supplies as opposed to the slower, more delicate process of infecting a host via a gene stealer's ovipositor organ. This by extension has allowed the Twisted Helix to increase the rate of infection at an exponential rate, with such methods soon coming to be adopted or independently discovered by other gene stealer cults. 
In fact, it would appear that the various attempts made by the biophagists in synthesizing artificial vectors of infection can inadvertently result in the creation of an aberrant. As detailed within the 8th edition Gene Stealer Cult Codex, any imperfections found within a Gene Stealer's genetic material can result in violent and often fatal levels of mutation developing within the hybrid offspring, transforming those that survive into aberrants. As such, it's entirely possible that, in their various attempts to generate new vectors of infection, the biophagists will inadvertently generate or perhaps even deliberately cultivate such imperfections in order to create additional aberrants. This latter possibility is loosely supported by the fact that the cult's biophagists will themselves become responsible for the care of any aberrants that are created, which in turn will often serve these specialist hybrids as bodyguards. The idea of aberrants being deliberately engineered is also supported by the role that they play within cult society, for as mentioned earlier, it is the aberrants that are primarily responsible for the construction of the vast network of tunnels utilised by the cult, allowing their brothers and sisters to eventually launch their uprising with devastating efficiency, taking their foes completely unaware in the process. Perhaps the truth is a combination of these previously mentioned factors. Perhaps natural mutation or exposure to warp energy results in the initial creation of such brutes, while later generations of aberrants are themselves, for lack of a better term, manufactured by the cult's biophagists in order to bolster their numbers. One thing is for certain, whenever aberrants appear upon the field of battle, little can dare hope to stand in their way and survive. What do you think? Leave a comment below. Thanks for watching.